Welcome to Base Coverage. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for supporting to the show. Don't forget to subscribe here, drop a comment, like a video, share with a friend. We cover ELF ball and we gotta keep this thing going. We doing everything they talk about. You know I'm everything a boss about. Not putting work and gotta toss them out. I'm really biting, they just barking out. I'm really riding, they just parking now. His street, what to talk about? See the big H when I'm we're, we're, we're talking to the fan base here, right? How should you feel if you're a fan of this team, right? And the team that I want to dive into are the Prague Lions. If you're seeing this Insta story, I would like to officially invite you to be an early tester on my app that I've been making with my brother. It's called Quiver, and the goal of it is to start interesting conversations that you wouldn't otherwise be having. So how it works is every single day, there's a prompt that goes out to all users, and you can't see other people's answers to the prompt until you answer it yourself. So once you answer it, then you enter into the timeline, and you can interact and comment on everybody's responses to the prompt. 24 hours later, there's a new question, a new prompt, and a new conversation. It's really fun, little social media. It's not like Twitter or Instagram that sucks you in for hours. You check it a couple times a day. It makes you kind of reflect on your life and your opinions and stuff like that. Uh, and it's been very fun so far. Like I said, we are early on in the process, so we're working through some bugs and kinks and stuff like that, but it does totally work. It's totally functional right now. So we would like to invite you to get on there, make a profile, follow me on Quiver. I'm going to be following back the first chunk of people that get on here and become early testers. Uh, it's been very fun so far. The Prague Lions, believe it or not, are actually having a, a decent offseason, right? They're just unfortunate to be in the conference that they're in. But that's no excuse. You decide to jump into this league, you got to find a way to make it work. So how should I feel if I'm a fan of the Prague Lions? Remember, is it is it new Lion Pride or same old Lions? All right, new Lion Pride or same old Lions? Before we dive into Prague, we got to talk about what happened last year, right? And what's new. If, you know, just being frank, it was this was a bad football team. And it's fair to question, you know, how committed this team was from top to bottom. Top to bottom, from owner, sponsors, coach, players, everyone involved. How committed were you year one in the ELF? Because – the play definitely didn't reflect that, right? Remember, you can't treat with how with how good talent is in the ELF. You can't treat this like a normal a normal league where you know you might be able to go to one practice a week and then show up on Saturday for the game. No, you, the film work has to be there, the weight training has to be there, speed training has to be there, the willingness to learn mentally and develop physically in the offseason has to be there, right? You are a 1-11 team. You could have maybe been 3-9, 4-8. Um, special teams definitely lost you a couple games, right? That's that's no surprise here, right? So how committed were you to uh, playing in the ELF year one, all right? Remember, this is, the, this is the ELF. This is not the Czech League, all right? But now we're going to turn over a new leaf, right? We're heading into year four to ELF, year two for the Prague Lions, right? They have the, – they're, they're, under, they're under new management. Right, led by new GM and shareholder uh, Mason Parker. All right, he's taking over the GM duties uh, and majority shareholder, and he's got this team in terms of sponsorships in the front office at least looking like they're trending in the right direction. All right, and then you have a new coach, old coach, but new coach. Right, former DC Dan Dish now becomes the head coach for the Prague Lions. All right, so let's see how this is going to fail. But remember, is it going to be the new Lions? Or is it going to be same old lines, right? We're going to have to see. But let's dive into their offseason a little bit, right? Some of the offseason moves that uh, that the Lions made that fairly decent, right? First of all, this is not a shocker. But you need more talent, right? I don't know who the locals are. I don't know where the talent is in the country. But you need to attract them to prod because you need more talent. And you need to play smarter. You need to play smarter football, right? Offensively, this was a team at 111, seven points per game defense, giving up 30 points per game, right? Off, uh, the Prague Lions, 111, last year, offensively scoring seven points per game, giving up 30 points per game, right? And you're asking, well, our DC is now the head coach, so what's going to be different? Eh, we'll see. We'll see. Because as the head coach, you're more game management versus calling the plays. Uh, so we'll see what – what, what Dan Dish is going to bring in. But I think the two biggest needs for this for this team 
O line and DBs, which are which for me, if you listen to the show, you know those are my two money positions. All right, you got to go get guys, and you got to go get the best of guys at those positions and bring them in. Right, some pivotal guys that they did resign. I like that they brought back James Brook, defensive lineman. A little bit on the older side, but still got some juice like juice left in the tank. I like that they resign running back Adam Juzeka. All right, I think he helps give them an identity of what they have potential to be. Remember, last year this was more of like a spread team, um, and they really relied on on Shazon and the quarterback. Uh, to run the offense this year. I, I could see them going more towards a balance, maybe more of a run heavy team. Um, but we shall see, you know, some of the new guys have to bring in quarterback Ky- Kyrie Lyles, right? Play for the New York Alliance in the GFL, right? Uh, arena ball wide receiver, Trevor Fields Jackson, right? Uh, bringing in defensive back, Daniel Wright from Alabama, right? Uh, one of the signings I like wide receiver from the Vienna Vikings, bringing this guy back home, uh, uh, Radim Kalus. All right, Vienna Vikings champion. Uh, another DB that I like, Peter Lundstrom, the villain, played for Potsdam last year. And they re- recently just signed running back Terry Johnson Fisher, who was on the um, Istanbul Rams, all right? Just like I said about Adam Juzeka, I think this seems to go more to a run-heavy, more control uh, the game type of offense. And I think them signing two running backs is telling you that. Signing two power backs is telling you that. This is actually the same model the Russell Panthers did with uh, David Brozowski. And um, uh, I, f- I forgot uh, I forgot Buddy's name that they that they just uh, – uh, Adams, right? Uh, Janini Adams. I forgot his first name or something like that. But they, they want to go two power running backs, and they're going to be – they want to be a physical team. So we'll see how that pans out, all right? Schedule-wise – when you look at the Prague Lions schedule, in my opinion, they got the second hardest schedule in the season. There's no doubt about it. They have a – for the type of team that they were last season and the the mess that we, we just came off of last season with the Prague Lions, they got dealt the second hardest schedule this year. Right. Your first eight games, you're facing you're facing teams who have a combined record last year of 42 and 30 within 71 win percentage. All right. Oh, and you have all these teams before your week nine by. So not only do you have the hard schedule, you're playing some of the top teams in the league early in the season and you don't have a bye till week nine. So it's going to be a steep battle for the Prague Lions. Right. Uh, you're playing teams that have. Proven offensive power, uh, proven offensive firepower, right? Let's dive into it, right? First, with the Hamburg Sea Devils. You ever heard of uh, Jarvis McClam and Theo uh, uh, Lindstrom? That's a nice one two punch from Hamburg. What about Jacob Sullivan, ELF uh, champion, MVP? And then you got Aaron Jackson, one of the top receivers in the ELF and top GFL receiver, pairing up with Robin Vilcek for the Berlin Thunder. You ever heard of those guys? Or what about Chad Jeffrey, Marvin Roach? Um, you know, a Munich team that is going to be even better this year than they were last year. What about being the Vikings when you got Jordan Bull and Weston Carr in the mix? Granted, they just lost Florian Beer Bomber. We don't know if or when he'll be back, depending on what happens in the draft. But you can never count the champs out. You can. I think since since Vienna's been in the ELF, they've lost a total of I think two games, right? So, oh, it don't even get me started on the Russell Panthers. You ever heard of Bolte Moreno? Oh, and then two guys that just came out of retirement and Mazan and, and Bennett. You got some guys that you're gonna have to figure out how to defend, all right? And as a defense last year, giving up thirty points per game. If that continues. Dan Ditch is not going to make it through the end of the season. And get it. We're in the offseason. I'm not stressing. I'm not going crazy. I'm just stating the facts that as your head coach being D coordinator and the offensive firepower you're about to go against and the teams that you're about to play, and you only won one game, I I want I can confidently say on paper this is a better prog team this year than they were last year, but they also have a harder schedule, right? So the question is, is how should I feel if I'm a Prog Lions fan? Emotionally cautious. Emotionally cautious. There's still more talent 
that they have to get go out and get. You got to get big bodies up front to compete. And I think they're building a better team, but I still want them. To, I, I personally want to see the competitive hunger and the developmental growth there. And I just be emotionally cautious, just because again they're building a better team, but they just have a they have a steeper hill to climb. And that's just the facts. I'm sorry. Agree with me or disagree? Comment below. Let me know what you think. Right? But if I'm a fan of the prog lines, I'm going to feel emotionally cautious. And we can still wait to see what's going on in terms of their signings and how they build their team. But thank you guys for tuning in. Drop a comment. Subscribe. Let's keep this ELF ball talking. Hard work, build nobody. Hard work, build nobody. Hard work, build nobody. Animal.